Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts and Cross Nation, and for today's video, we're basically gonna be going over all of the most recent uh, events and stuff since my last video. Let's quickly go over everything that's new that came in the uh, the 3.0 update for the game. Uh, starting off with the Classic Kingdom mode that we currently have. We're able to access it through the title screen, and as you can see, there's five different game modes throughout the entire thing. Now, in case you're not aware, uh, if you complete all five game modes and you reach the target goal that's up here in the top right hand corner, kind of like where it says clear for me right here. If you do that for all five games, you then have the, ba you basically have the right to unlock the new uh, Starlight Keyblade that's going to be coming out for Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, and you can actually obtain your prize within the limited time challenge section over here. So as you can see, like right here, it shows that two of my five games have been cleared. I've reached the goal. I only have three more left. Um, and then once I beat all five, I will ha be able to unlock the product code to enter in into like my uh, my uh, my PlayStation 3 and stuff, um, or Xbox if you happen to have Xbox. Now, as far as I'm aware, the product codes for the Starlight aren't available just yet. So if you've already beaten them, you do have to wait for a little bit, but they should be coming sooner or later. Now, if you aren't aware as well, when you actually meet the goal for each of the five games, you're actually awarded an extra 600 jewels upon completion as well. So you're basically able to get a total of 3,000 free jewels just by playing the Classic Kingdom mini games uh, by reaching the goal. Now, just as a little disclaimer as well, uh, because I was a little confused about this when I was first, you know, playing and such, but when you're actually playing the Classic Kingdom games, uh, for the goal that's in the top right hand corner of the screen that goal alone does not necessarily mean that you have to reach this exact number in your actual tries itself so like you can even see right here I've already cleared the fish and frenzy and this is actually personally my favorite one out of all five but I've cleared the fish and frenzy and my top score isn't a 7500 score uh, like it's asking right there it's actually just a 1690 score um, and the way that scores work for every single one of these games is that every single time you play the game, every single one of, of your previous attempts scores, not just your top three. So I know it shows your top three right here and stuff, but this, this, this top three is mostly just for rankings, okay? It's just for the rankings and stuff. Uh, all of your previous scores, so even like your fourth try, your fifth try, sixth, seventh, all the way until your very first try and stuff, um, all of that gets added together um, and creates your total score, okay? Ah, total score, which is what counts for the goal, okay? That is what counts towards the goal. So even if you're not able to get the greatest of scores within the Classic Kingdom mini games, uh, as long as you just keep playing the games and such, sooner or later you'll be able to reach the goals. Now in terms of the other portion of the 3.0 update, for the extras feature, it used to be called x -trace, but apparently it's more like x, -x like, you know, number three in Spanish or something. But for the extras feature, uh, there's actually going to be a community tab over here. Now. This is supposed to be kind of like the uh, central community hub, kind of, for players to kind of get together and talk to. And as you can see, there's right here, you can, there's one for just talking about Kingdom Hearts in general, strategies for the game, and just general discussion. Uh, we'll click strategies for now. And when you click on one of these, you'll go ahead and you'll actually see a bunch of basically chat rooms pop up and such. All right. Uh, I have one of my own already. Now, one of the things that you may not have known about the community tab is that when you actually go into your rooms, of course, there's going to be a ton of people within the rooms. There's a max limit of 10 that can be in each room. Um, but one thing you're actually able to do with the community tab is when, when you actually click on individual players. Uh, so I clicked on AJ over there. You can see that their little profile pops up and on the bottom left corner over here. So right here. There's actually a follow tab and a chat room. Uh, and what happens is that if you follow someone within the chat room, you will actually be able to see every single room that they create as well as every single room that they join. Uh, so if there's someone out there that, you know, they're friends with or, you know, just someone you want to like 
get notifications about, you can go ahead and follow them and you'll be able to get notifications and when they create new rooms and stuff. And a good example of this is that I myself have created a few rooms of my own. Um, apparently I have five followers already. <laughs> but yeah, I've created a few rooms of my own. Um, I, I was like, all the rooms were kind of basic. So I was like, you know, let's make one that's people are most likely gonna end up be, you know, going for. So I made one like beginner help, PVP help. You need my, my a YouTube channel help. I was like, why not? Um, but you can basically make things for different types of scenarios and stuff. Truthfully, for the higher tier type players and stuff, um, I'm not really expecting the, the better players to actually utilize this feature too often, but I do see this as being a great, like, kind of starting point for, like, beginner players and maybe intermediate players depending on, like, if they're a casual player or not. So it's not a bad feature, but it's not the greatest either. It's just, like... It's like a nice, it's just like a nice thing to have, I guess you could say. Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and talk about more of like the, the VIP type stuff and such. This week, we actually have some of the previous avatar boards making a return, such as the Kingdom Hearts 3 outfits for Sora and Kairi, as well as Peter Pan. Now, thankfully, these avatar boards are only 1500 jewels this time, which is actually kind of a steal. Uh, more or less, they come with some decent stuff, uh, as we can see right here. They do come with a type boost 6 max and gauge 1, which is actually pretty good. Uh, defense boost 3 max, which is okay for the lower ranks um but if you want to get in the real high ranks in pvp uh, you basically have to have defense boost 4 max at the very least but the 5 max and lux plus plus is absolutely fantastic so if you don't already have kingdom Hearts 3 sora or uh kairi outfits i would highly recommend trying to get so uh if you're if you have enough jewels of course because they're actually really good outfits uh, with what they come with of course and they come with like you know the other stuff like brooms and gems and such for the peter pan one the peter pan one is not nearly as good um and it's honestly very easily worth skipping uh just because the value you're getting out of it is not the greatest the earrings do provide a skill perk of plus six which is pretty nice but the main thing that is of focus that I'm looking at for these boards is actually the attack boost 5 max and gauge 1 that's within it because the attack boost 5 and lux plus is very anything that's any attack skill that's not a max skill is always very iffy and not too reliable uh, and that's just because of the fact that it's RNG. <laughs> the only way you can affect that is with uh, skill perks and you need to have like the highest skill perks to even make that the most like consistent as consistent as possible and even then it's kind of a little iffy. So out of the returning avatar boards I would just recommend the Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora and Kari if you're in a need to get some skills and such. Next up we have the VIP for this week and just like usual the past few weeks already now i think two three weeks or so uh if you get vip this week we will be getting a gold ticket on monday i'm still kind of annoyed and pissed off by the fact they just haven't made a quest for me to just claim the ticket immediately like everything else in vip that honestly kind of bugs me it's a little annoying to be honest because uh, i could really use that ticket now to try and finally get like say my last tier eight or something or I don't know, for you guys, it might be a, a tier 7 or whatever in the gold ticket. Uh, the fact is, I could be using the gold ticket right now if, like, they just made a quest. And it's annoying that I have to wait an entire week for it. It's, it, it just doesn't, like, whereas I get everything else right away. It just doesn't, it just doesn't feel right. Uh, on top of the fact, I'm still pissed off that golden tickets are only obtainable through VIP and PVP so far. It's kind of annoying. But aside from that, uh, we are getting the key art 18 medal for this week, for this week's VIP, along with 1400 extra jewels. Now, to be honest, it's not the greatest medal. It's an okay medal. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and take a look at it real quick. So this is the medal right here. It's honestly pretty good art. It looks fairly similar to, I believe, the Key Art 13 VIP medal that we used to have in the past. Although this time, this is actually the uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora in his actual outfit this time. Um, but this is what it does. It's a magic upright tier 8 metal, does 11 hits, single target, zero gauge, and has a multiplier of a 10.3 to a 14.26. And this is the six star multiplier, I believe. 
uh, deals 11 hits, and this is the big thing right here. Only for its own attack, one attack, so basically just its own attack, it raises its your general strength, upright strength, and magic strength by 7, lowers the target's general defense, upright defense, and magic defense by 7. So basically full-on buffs, full-on debuffs, solely for its own attack, uh, and it does more damage if there's one enemy or zero parts left for raid bosses. But here's the kicker. It provides plus 10 enemy counters. That's actually pretty huge. <laughs> That's by far the biggest amount of counters in the entire game. Now, the multiplier isn't anything too fancy to look at. Uh, it's definitely, it's not an illustrated invisible or a warrior of light or anything. Uh, the multiplier is not is not quite there, but even then, it's it's a pretty good metal. The fact that it fully buffs and debuffs itself for its own attack and provides plus 10 counters is not that bad. Is it something that I think is worth getting VIP for? Um, almost. Not quite. But, like, if you do get it, I can see this definitely becoming something that would, be, like, potentially be useful down the line. Because uh, it is by far the most. And if you happen to get extra attack on that thing, oh my god. <laughs> Automatic tw plus 20 counters on whatever it is you're fighting. That's ridiculous. The amount of usefulness for this metal, I would say, is kind of more or less similar to the usefulness of the uh, Miguel and Dante VAP medal that we had a while ago, where it provides a ton of counters. It, its ability is is good, it's useful, but it's not like necessarily necessary to have that that makes sense. So that's kind of position this medal is in, in my opinion. And of course, for the rest of VIP, we're getting the, the standard magic brooms, the gems. I still wish that they would increase this to five gems. Uh, instead of two for all three of them because two does not cut it these days two is just not enough like for upgrading keyblades it's gonna take way too long to upgrade a, any substantial amount of keyblades at this point especially with the like a new cap to the keyblades being increased I, I don't know if they actually got like adjusted just yet or not because I don't have any of my keyblades at level 40 um, but I believe in JP the actual cap increased from level 40 to level 50 for keyblades uh, and it's already hard enough as it is to get to level 40 just because the fact we barely get any gems as it is <laughs> like two gems and this is just from VIP okay this is not even counting like what it is for free to play players and such who get even less so it, it it's just they need to change something about that uh, but we're also getting the magic mirror quest as well uh, basically standard stuff and next up is this week's Union Cross, where you can also get the Starlight Glasses for your pet avatar part. Uh, you're able to get up to 400 jewels in this week's Union Cross, so, you know, easy jewels right there. And that's kind of it. There's nothing too much special about this week's Union Cross. Now, if you aren't aware, we're actually receiving a new raid boss that we can fight every single week. I believe this is the second week, and I believe we're supposed to be getting one more raid boss for next week. I don't know if we're going to have a raid boss on the last week of this month or such, uh, but as far as I'm aware, we're supposed to have a different raid boss every single week for this month. But for this week, anyways, we do have the close-handed captain. Uh, in case you are not aware, because I know it definitely confused quite a few people, including myself at first, but the raid boss only appears during the bonus Lux times. Uh, that's why when you actually go into the event section and stuff, it'll show up as like, you know, zero minutes left, and like when you click on it, there's nothing there. Uh, but you can still access the raid boards, and that's just because of the fact you can only access it during the bonus Lux times. Alright, so second last thing before we end today's video, uh, we are getting another deluxe PvP week for this week, where the Keyblades for this week are the Missing Egg, Fairy Stars, and Olympia. Personally, I'm still waiting for them to actually adjust the rewards because they said they would do that. Uh, it, it just seems a little strange to me how easily they can fix other things, but they can't, they can't make just slight adjustments now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. Why, why it keeps taking them so long to slowly implement uh, little things here and there, like step by step, instead of just like like chunks of it at once okay granted i know a lot of us are kind of just like kind of on the download because we did just submit our surveys uh, regarding everything and we know that's going to take a while but at the same time pvp has been something that we've been complaining about ever since it first came out so it it just makes me question like 
they should have already had some stuff already like you know prepared or in mind to work on and stuff um, before we even did the survey so it, it still makes me a little questionable as to like what exactly is going on on their end but other than that in case you are not aware there was actually a PvP bug that's been active for about three or four months. <laughs> that PvP has been out at the last three or four months, I believe. Um, according to a Reddit post on Reddit by uh, KHUX Glitch, <laughs> where they basically made a Reddit post talking about the fact that there is a big, huge bug in PvP that lasted for way too long, that essentially was kind of breaking, game breaking, uh, in which case a small party of players actually found a way to make defense skills such as like db5 and db6 and stuff to actually trigger every single time with near 100 percent guarantee compared to you know what it's supposed to be which is where assuming you have like max skill perk or something is maybe like a 50 percent chance at most like more or less but they actually found a bug that let them be able to uh have those db skills like trigger every single time for every single hit. Of course, just by hearing that sounds ridiculously OP and broken, uh, both in the good and bad term of the word broken. Uh, just because of the fact that that means they, they literally were able to just ride their way to the top because every single hit that the opponent did it to you, like was a DB5 uh, hit instead, instead of like a defense boost for max with some chances of DB5 proccing, if that makes sense. It was always DB5. It was absolutely ridiculous, apparently. Uh, I haven't experienced this too much myself. I think there was maybe only one time uh, in my PvP experience where I was like, you know, so, this seems a little bit odd, but I was one of those people that kind of threw it. Maybe they just got lucky. Uh, now, fortunately, the bug has already been fixed, uh, so you can no longer actually replicate this type of bug on in PvP. So it wouldn't even matter if I like explained how to do the bug in the first place. But at the very least, I felt like I should at least let you guys know about it because it is kind of a serious issue if if a bug like that had lasted for three whole months <laughs> and nothing was done about it. Like that's the type of bug that just makes people hate PvP even more, which is kind of unfortunate because I'm one of those people that actually really enjoys uh, PvP. Uh, I like the mechanics of PvP. Of course, uh, the rewards and rankings and stuff, that's a whole nother issue. But at least in PvP itself and how it plays out, I, I enjoy PvP. If you'd like to go ahead and check out the Reddit post yourself though, I'll be leaving the link to it down below. But other than that, that was it for today, guys. Uh, I just wanted to upload this since I didn't get to upload it yesterday. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button. It's the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts and Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.